You've been studying English for years, but when you hear someone speak, it doesn't sound like the English you learn, and you find it hard to understand, and when you speak, people look confused. Sadly, this experience is fairly common. It's what happens when you've been taught English the traditional way, where your teacher relies heavily on textbooks and the classroom drills. That's why we don't use textbooks in this listening first approach method. In fact, you know, you have my permission to throw your old textbooks away. You know, like, as I've said before, textbooks are not a defective way to learn English. And with listening first approach, you will learn real English. Because textbooks have a number of problems. First, they are grammar focused. We have already discussed the reasons that you should avoid grammar study. Another huge problem is that the textbooks mostly teach the formal form of English. This is the form of English that you commonly find in writing. Textbooks rely heavily on the right, uh, written dialects that are completely unnatural. And perhaps you recognize this one, you know, like, hello, hello, how are you, I'm fine, and you. You know, the textbook may be accompanied by, by an audio in which the actors read this dialect, you know, using string rhythm and completely unnatural pronunciation. So, what happens in real life after that? You study this textbook dialect, and you think that you know English, and you travel to an English-speaking country, such as the United States. You meet, you meet a person at the bus stop, and they say, hey, what's up? Of course, they are just greeting you and asking, how are you? But they are using their real casual English. That's much more common among the native speakers. In fact, as a, as a teacher, you know, I, ha I heard this common complaint most often from students. They travel to many countries to, to, to study, you know, like, and uh, many new students thought of themselves as advanced English learners just because they got uh, some high IELTS score. And many had, again, like, had to have a great test course, you know. However, when they tried to communicate with real people, they had tremendous problems. And I remember one student named Ali saying to me that I can't understand what anyone is saying. I don't understand people at the bus stop. I don't understand the waitress in the restaurants. And I thought I was advanced, but I can't understand anyone. He was living in the UK. Like most students, you know, Ali had, had studied formal textbook English, but never learned real conversational English. Yeah, he did well on tests, but could not function in the real world. Real pronunciation is also much different than what you will find in the textbooks and, and their audios. And this is another you know, source of difficulty for those who learn using traditional methods. The schools typically teach the formal dictionary pronunciation of the English words. While textbooks will teach you, for example, how are you? Real American speakers like this to say something like, how are you doing? How is it going? Hey, what's up? Or nice to meet you, right? To really communicate in English, you absolutely must understand this real English. And these are, you know, only the simplest examples of greetings. The entire language is full of this, this uh, such such examples. And no wonder even advanced textbook learners, you know, English learners, struggle to communicate with the real people. Idioms are another common problem for textbook learners. Spoken American English is full of idioms, yet you will learn few of them from textbook. And recently, I, you know, just listened to conversation, you know, on the business topic, you know, between the native speakers. I reviewed the recording. I was shocked, just shocked how many idioms that they use in, sh in very short conversation. Idioms are phrases that have a meaning different from the individual words in it, right? They are often based on the metaphors <coughs> or uh, cultural topics and can be quite hard to, to understand logically. For example, in the business meeting, a colleague might say, we scored a touchdown on that project. This idiom comes from the sport of American football. It means that to have a, a big success or victory. But you are unlikely to learn this phrase in a textbook. It's, it's very commonly used by Americans. So clearly textbooks are ineffective learning tools. But what tools will you use them? You will learn the same way the native speakers do. By using real, authentic materials. Use only real English materials. What do I mean by real? Well, I'm talking about the English materials that are for native speakers or that are very similar to those that used by native speakers. They can be books, articles, audiobooks, podcasts, videos, and etc. I think it's enough for now, but I will continue this topic. Take care. Bye. Self-study paketi barədə ətraflı məlumat əldə etmək üçün bizə müraciət edin.